What's up guys, welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase focusing on a really powerful arc and clearance setup that is one of the best builds to use for content where you need to complete and utter control on a field, and will reward you very well for keeping this pace up. The build involves the use of Crown of Tempest and Trinity Ghoul, which is a common loadout that many players use when they want crowd control setup that is easy to use and master. And the good thing about the build is that just having the two exotic is literally all you need to be effective for whatever content you plan to use it in. But I've decided to experiment a bit more with what we got and further combine the use of elemental wells to see how much better the build as a whole can be. And let me tell you, this build is nuts when in the right environment as you can become practically near unstoppable to approach and the synchronization is just off the charts. You will have the ability to create supers that last for a very long time create tons of orbs of power, be able to chain your arc abilities one after another, and many, many more. Gambit, Strikes, you name them, this build will put in the work. It can also be very effective in content such as endgame nightfalls, but this will require a few tinkering around before doing so. This is an already powerful build without the use of elemental wells, but with the added mod now it makes the build flow like a thunder god itself, and I honestly believe once you do try the build out, you'll fall in love. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So the subclass I've chosen is the Eternal Conduction for its chain effects that work hand in hand with our exotic bow and the mods we have attached. The subclass main trait is the chain's effect as far as it can go and when dealing with a large group of enemies in your vicinity, you have many options in terms of how to dispatch them while still greatly benefiting from the tree as a whole and there is a lot of things happening when using the build. Using your melee or grenades for example will activate the arc web perk that will grant grenade energy back for each arc chain you cause and this is great against majors who have a minor enemy near them or just anyone caught within his radius. It may not kill the major overall but it will definitely spread to those caught near it and cause even more damage in the long run. You then have your bow for example, the Trinity Ghoul which can also activate a arc chain effect to others and can keep this effect going as long as you net kills with it, which of course suits the build and the style very well and can work off of our abilities as a whole if we get a kill with our arc melee or grenades. From playing around with the setup, you can activate the weapon exotic trait through your abilities which is nice for always having one or the other arc chain effects options available, so if you need a quick charge make sure you have your ability ready to use. Now we are also using the Crown of Tempest which also offers us the ability to increase our arc ability regeneration and also extend our super and this greatly helps us out in two ways. With the arc abilities being regenerated from our end via arc kills made, we can have our abilities stay afloat all the time and when combined with some of the elemental world mods bonuses such as increased damage or increased stat points, we are getting the best of both worlds. Secondly, its ability to extend our super will also be stacking with the tree ability Transcendence, which also extends our super for longer if we cast it with full grenades and melee, and this can allow us to do some serious damage in the end game when you need to clear a room of all enemies out very fast. The build not only feedbacks into each other like an infinite loop, but it stays relevant from start to finish without needing to rely on must have mods or perks. For new players, this means you can pick it up and go and have a great time without needing to heavily invest on your end. For weapons, the loadout is practically near the same as my last recent build as the build's main focus is the exotic in play and nothing else. This of course means you can freely adapt to your liking and use whatever content you have in mind. For me, there wasn't much need required to change up some of the weapons as it covers personal defence pretty well and also helps the bow out where it can't be practical. You can skip ahead to the stat section if you wish as most of what I'm going to say is the same from last time, but if you want to hear more of my sexy voice a bit longer then here is the primary in use. My primary will be the heavy shotgun with outlaw and fresh and this will act as my close the gap weaponry. Although having a primary weapon that hits hard would be suitable, except from toil and trouble and the outer assault of shotgun, there isn't really any other shotgun that hits the way that heritage does with a great all round feel to it. Landing crits will reward you with large damage and using this against champions for example can allow you to reduce their health in a short amount of time before they recover. The shotgun is simple but efficient and will net you the many kills, plus with the added fresh perk we can build up a super which will play a major part later on. 
For a secondary, I'm using the Trinity Gore Exotic Bow with its catalyst, and if you still haven't got one yet, now is the time to get one and play around with it. The bow can cause chain arc reaction to those it connects within its venicity, and keep the arc effect going until it hits a dead end, aka a tough enemy, or until there is literally nothing left. With the catalyst, this weapon becomes a monster on its own, as it can activate its perk through any arc abilities. And like I mentioned earlier, this will go hand in hand with our setup for achieving a wide chain reaction to everyone. Think of the build with the bow like a spider web, and then think of the spider web with arc energy flowing through it, and shocking everyone caught near it while buffing you. That is this build in a nutshell. I feel like using this for the season with Battlegrounds and Nightfalls is probably one of the best to pick up and use with the current design of things and the usage of overload bows. The only other weapon that is on par with it is the Risk Runner, which is also a great alternative if you don't have the bow but still want to use the build. Definitely don't sleep on that weapon, honestly. Before Heavy, I've chosen to use the Kojuela rocket launcher that has auto load and holster, which is perfect for negating slow reload speed, and Ambitious Assassin, which will allow us to have 2 in the tube if we get 2 plus kills. The recent buff to rockets has been an absolute godsend and has given many players a reason to use rockets now in endgame and has made me fall in love with them all over again. As the build doesn't require a specific heavy weapon to use, you can freely use something more fitting to your own playstyle. With the way the build is designed, going with something that has long range damage or continuous damage potential is the best way forward, so grenade launchers or rockets are a good choice to pick. Now the stats. As we're going to be covering all of our abilities via energy regen for the mods, especially the elemental one mods and subclass, we won't need to heavily invest in one or two areas required, but instead pick one and balance the rest around it, so that when we activate the elemental one mods or our subtree perks, we can boost them with the needed results. If we take a look at discipline, it should roughly be the highest stat in your arsenal as you're going to be using it a lot for building with your super, activating your exotic boast trait, and most importantly, help with regenerating all of our abilities in one go. Aiming for 70 for a 41 second cooldown or even 60 for a 45 second cooldown would be ideal with everything in play. And then you also have to remember that we aren't using any given perks such as Wellspring or Demolitioners to help boost the stat anymore, so everything in hand will be naturally gained. This isn't a bad thing though, as with how well the build synergizes well with itself and how you can get kills, it will allow you to easily gain your grenades back within a few seconds. Some other ways we will further support this area is with the Elemental Ornaments mod, which will allow you to drop an arc well upon grenade kills, and this will allow you the ability to have improved ability regen for 30 seconds, which will stay active for a very long time if you get a consistent arc kills. We are also chucking in both the Armaments and Wisdom mods that will also benefit from this over time. The distribution, Installation and the Bomber mod are neutral, so they will also grant increase in grenade regeneration at the same time. So at this point, you will have enough things going on in the background that will net you more natural enemy compared to using a singular perk. Your intellect stat now will be the second most important stat to invest in for the build, and for this, this will be linked back to the Front of Wisdom mod which will provide you a base plus 50 intellect points into your common intellect stat. So with my 50 intellect at the moment, once I collect the elemental wall and activate my mod, I will have a cooldown of 100 which is a 3 minute 48 cooldown. This won't look fast on your end or instant, but the bonuses you get from this is still great as you're getting a 30 second boost from the picked up well, which is increasing what you currently have. And like I mentioned before, if you have the following arc mods like I have, then this will be continuously building up while also benefiting from the fresh perk and the hands on mods. Both will aid you in quick super build up over time. Resilience and recovery will always be important, so it's always recommended to have it at 50 to 60 as this will allow you to survive and actually hit. And strength can follow suit as well as it will stick in the same pathway as our grenades, but used less often. Now let's dive into the mods as this is becoming quite a lengthy and in-depth talk as to how everything works, which most of you here will have a good idea on already. For head we have grenades, hands-on and elemental armaments mod. Arms we have resilience, fastball. Overload Bow and Font of Might mod. Chest we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener times 2 and Font of Wisdom mod. Leg we have Discipline, Better Already, Insulation and Elemental Orders mod. Bond we have Minor Intellect, Distribution, Bomber and Elemental Light mod. 
the build has a lot of things going on in the background as I explained earlier. And when in motion, you are literally using arc abilities by the dozen with consistent cooldown always popping up on screen and never slowing down from it. From the end results, this can become very hectic in a situation where there are a dozen enemies charging at you as the results from one grenade, one melee or one charged trinity ghoul is quite shocking, no pun intended. If we compare this to my last build through the use of Tiku's Divination and War My Cells plus Elemental Wells, we have a near identical setup with the only difference being the elements being used, with both areas allowing you to easily CC areas and both have great chain abilities that you or your teammates can also work alongside of each other. The only main differentiation point that can be made on the two builds as a whole is that the solo build is more team focused, with the idea of providing as much support as you can for the mods and abilities involved. While this build here is more of a powerhouse CC dealer and involves chaining its abilities and keeping a consistent pressure on others so that you can always benefit from it. Instead of supporting teams, you're going to be the main leader of overall DPS against all types of enemies and with how interconnected everything is, will allow you to stand your ground as a solo or team player even when you're on your own. Like I mentioned before, our grenades will be the main focusing point that everyone from our mods to subclass will be working off from, and from that we can then spread its effects to our overall abilities. A prime example is using our grenades to activate our exotic bill, which will charge it and allow you to spread its arc chain effects to others. Nifty if you get surrounded or you need to pick off a bunch of enemies from long distance. At the same time, mods such as Font of Wisdom will grant you the extra boost in intellect points for faster super regeneration, which once active will then trigger the Crown of Tempest Exotics trait and will extend our super for longer, which will then also trigger the Elemental Light mod and allow us to draw Elemental Worlds that we can pick up and actively use in our super form and etc. What you're witnessing is a very simple but very powerful arc build that will constantly rotate its ability usage and allow you to have a wealth of ability flowing, just from triggering a mod. All of this is achieved from a single grenade that spread its effects to others and now allows you to wield thunder wherever you go. You'll mainly want to use the build in Gambit, Strikes, Out of the Sorrows, basically anything where there'll be lots of enemies charging at you, and also anything involving arc shields as well. And getting content like Nightfalls is viable, but do be careful as to what modifier is being used, as this can potentially put you or your team at risk if you don't have the right elements being used, such as match game being active. So there you have it, a really fun and powerful arc build that many of us are familiar with, but enhanced with the new season mods. I plan to do a void one as well to complete the free elemental theme, so do stick around if you want to see them in action. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Timefall content. If you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.